So you have an Elcom Huge. It's a pretty good trackball. I like it because it's great for CAD applications that need a centre button. While this thing is fairly smooth out of the box, it can be even better. The big red trackball spins on top of some tiny synthetic ruby balls and these are okay, but you may notice the precise pointer movements are not as easy or as smooth as they could be. Switching to some high quality zirconium balls rated G10 or better can help. I used a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead and tweezers for this job. Get started by heating the sticky rubber pads on the underside with a hot air gun. If you do this, the adhesive should separate easily without tearing and it will be easy to put the pads back on. With the flathead driver, lift up the corner of the pad and it should come up without any tearing or residue left behind. I could have given these just a little bit more heat. You can see one or two spots of adhesive left on the plastic. Wearing gloves will also keep any oils from your hands from stopping the adhesive being sticky again when you put them back on. Put them somewhere aside out of the way. Uh, it's kind of hard to get them off your fingers when you've picked them up, but uh, if you put them adhesive side up with the screwdriver holding them down while you try and get your fingers off them, that can work. When that's done, pop the trackball out. It's clever that the trackball won't fall out by itself, but it's still easy to get it out when you want to. Next, there are two screws to take out from inside the cup of the trackball. If they don't fall out and they're actually undone properly, just grab them with the tweezers. It's good to do this on a mat so that you don't lose these tiny screws. Under the unit you'll find six more screws to take out around the outside and one in the central hole. You can see that this one's already been opened because there's a hole in the paper label where that central screw comes out. It's really good to do this on a mat where you can put the screws down and you can find them again. You, you're just not going to find these if you drop them on the carpet. With all those out, it's time to separate the two halves. A guitar pick is really useful for getting into the crack and to open the gap. Do it carefully because there are some little clips that can break. When the two halves separate, don't yank it open. There are some little cables that you need to undo first. They're zero insertion force FFC cables. There's a little latch that you flip up. See I'm getting the screwdriver just under the little latch and I've cleverly hidden everything there. But uh, you flip it up and then the cable will just come right out. You can see it more clearly on the smaller cable. Here it goes now. Just flip up that little latch and then the cable will pretty much fall right out of the connector. There it is. The red, yellow, black cable just unplugs. The optical assembly needs to be removed from the ball cup before the cup can come off the trackball top. All of the internal screws are silver so you can't mix them up. Lift this carefully off the pegs. Luckily it can only go back together one way. There are two pieces. There's a clear plastic lens and there's the PCB itself.
The ball cup assembly is held onto the top of the track ball with just two screws. Again, it can only go back together one way. Now in this cup, you can already see three white dots, so I've already put zirconium balls in this one. It spins really nicely. To finally get to these balls, you need to separate the cup into its two halves. The three screws need to be undone first. Keep it flat on the bench until you're ready to separate the two halves. Put the screws away first. Now keep this flat on the desk and you can carefully pick up the top half, lifting it straight up. You don't want to dislodge the balls and be chasing those everywhere. There are the 2.5mm zirconium balls and they're kind of hard to pick up. You don't want to grab them too tightly with the tweezers because if it's not perfectly centered they just go ping and they're gone. Um, they weigh very very little. You just want to pick them up delicately and put them down somewhere. The original ruby ball that came in this track ball, I've got one of them there on the mat, now picking it up in the tweezers. It's exactly like the little white balls, but it's red. I'm not going to confuse them, so I just keep them in the same bag. Now I'm going to put those zirconium balls back in. They just sit inside a depression in the cup, and the top of the cup has a matching depression so that they're completely enclosed, they can't go anywhere. Uh, once again, there I am dropping the balls everywhere because they're very hard to pick up. And lucky that screwdriver was there. The top half of the cup only goes on one way. You can see that there's a uh, raised part and just put it down carefully on top. You don't want to dislodge the balls while you're doing it, but it will click into place and then the screws go in. To reassemble without damage, take a screw and put it into the hole and then turn it counterclockwise. You should be able to hear and feel a click as it drops into the thread. Then tighten it, but not too tight. That click as the screw drops into the thread tells you that you're not stripping the thread. If everything looks okay, drop the ball in the cup and see if it spins freely. Now time to start putting all the units together. The cup assembly needs to be put back onto the trackball top. Make sure the cable is facing this way and you should be able to just slot this into the two pegs. Two screws hold this in place.
much up. Time to replace the optical assembly. This is in two pieces and it's easier to put all this together if you insert the lens in the bottom of the PCB and then grab the lens sides with your left hand and then put it down on top of the pegs on the ball cup. The final two silver screws hold this in place. Now putting everything together, the thumb assembly, which is where the left click, the scroll wheel and the back and forward buttons go, um, there's a thing you can get wrong here. On the side of the PCB is a three-way switch and that has to mate up with the position of the sensitivity switch, which is on that thumb unit. Make sure that either both are up or both are down, then when you put them together, it will work. If you don't do this, you can easily put it together and find out your switch isn't really attached. Then it's time to attach cables. The big cable goes first. This one's pretty easy to put in. Just hold it in place and then just flip down that little lever and it will stay in place. You can see just a little bit of the blue reinforcing sticking out of the connector. Now I'm putting in the smaller cable which connects the optical assembly. Um, and as I do this and flip down the catch, the light goes on. And that's when I realize I've been doing the whole thing with the trackball connected to the computer. Don't do that. That's a really bad idea. Finally plug in that yellow, red, black cable. Then you might need to tuck that out of the way a little bit when you put the two halves together. When you do put this together, you've got to be pretty careful. There are a lot of small catches. There are many things that can get stuck or jammed. Just be sure the cable's out of the way. Fit it together gently. Never ever force something like this. It's just too easy to break. It should all go together and look all around it, make sure that all the, uh, the seams match, make sure all the buttons work, make sure the switch works, and then you can go and put the screws back in. Replace all seven screws on the back. Again, go counterclockwise and make sure you hear that click before you tighten them up.
The final two screws are at the bottom of the ball cup. Time to put back on the sticky pads. These are not really critical because you don't move a trackball around much, but you may as well put them back on. Position them carefully because if you stick them down hard on one end and then the other end doesn't match up, they're never going to be right and you could even make the trackball uneven. So try and put them exactly in the corner they're supposed to go and then gently smooth them along. Then replace the ball and you're done. Enjoy your new smooth track ball. Thanks for watching.